Hello? <clears throat> hello, hello, hello. Hello, I just want to, uh, I had something flying through the brain tonight. This wasn't really planned, but I needed to um, share what I'm thinking tonight. So for those of you who are hanging out with me tonight, I appreciate it. I always say you can be doing any number of other things and you chose to hang out with me a little bit. So <clears throat> whether you're passing through or hanging out for a little while, your presence is appreciated. Be ready to rock and roll. In a minute. Okay. Just had to make sure my sound was right on YouTube. And I will be ready to rock and roll in a minute. So like I said, I do appreciate you for tuning in. You could be doing any number of things, but you chose to hang out with me tonight for a few minutes. And um, I had some things I wanted to say about Jay-Z and his social justice partnership with the NFL, because I had some questions. I am Alfonso McGriff III, born and raised in Hartford, Connecticut. I identify myself as a public intellectual, an author, an inventor, and a public speaker. My Facebook business page is Alfonso Speaks. And I have um, YouTube channels. Make it plain. If you type in make it plain, you have to type in Alfonso afterwards in order to get to my channel. And I also have, have Alfonso Speaks as a YouTube channel. And that's, that's cool, too. It's always good to share the videos to let people know that I am on and running my mouth. <clears throat> What I like to do is share my perspective about things. Not for the purpose of changing anyone's mind or anyone's thoughts, but to offer a different perspective. Maybe it's a perspective you haven't heard, maybe it's one you have, but I like to share my perspective on different issues that are going on in this society. So tonight, like I said earlier, I want to talk about this partnership with Jay-Z and the NFL. I also want to know that want you to know that I did post the phone number because I have no problem hearing other people's perspective. Um, I'm not intimidated by a perspective that's different from mine, so please feel free to chime in and share your perspective. <clears throat> as we continue on with the evening. So, the NFL is forming an entertainment and social justice partnership with Jay-Z. 
and Rock Nation. Now what I wanted to do was look up social justice. I needed to understand what social justice means so I could have a better understanding of what I'm talking about tonight. When I looked up social justice, the definition for social, social justice was uh, justice in terms of the distribution of wealth, opportunities, and privileges within a, within a society. Social justice was identified as justice in terms of the distribution of wealth, opportunities, <clears throat> and privileges within a society. So the first question I had is, why is social justice needed? Why is social justice needed? Well, the answer to that is social justice is needed because we live in a society that is built on the foundation of basically white people treating black people and others as though we are uncivilized criminals and unconvicted criminals who are beneath their pets. That's why we have to talk about social justice. We have to talk about social justice because there has been a lot of injustice in this country as it relates to the relationship between black people and white people in particular. How long has America had a social justice problem? Well, America has had a social justice problem since its inception. Who is responsible for creating social injustice? I just said, white folks are responsible for creating social injustice. Are the creators of social injustice as adamant about ending social in injustice as the victims of social injustice? The question again is, are the creators of social injustice as adamant about ending social injustice as the victims of social injustice? The creators of social injustice are not as adamant about ending social injustice because being the people who are responsible for social injustice, if they wanted to end it, they would just change their behavior. And up to this point, they have zero interest in changing their behavior. So the interesting thing is, as Jay-Z partners with the NFL, um, forming an entertainment and social justice partnership the social justice partnership would be needed forever unless the relationship between black people and white people in particular in this country were to change the relationship is not the way it is because of black people the relationship is the way it is because of white people So, are the creators of social injustice as adamant about ending social injustice as the victims of social injustice? And if so, why is social injustice not ending quickly? Why is social injustice not ending quickly? Social injustice is not ending quickly because the people who are responsible for social injustice um, they don't want to end it I don't think they ever want to end it but the impression is that they don't want to end it too fast it's kind of like back in the day when they told Martin Luther King man slow down you're moving too fast you got to be more patient 
and people who are the victims of social injustice don't want to be patient. They just want social injustice to end. So social injustice is not ending quickly because at this point in time, white people have no interest in ending social injustice. Why haven't the people responsible for social injustice resolved this issue a long time ago? Well, the answer is the same. The people responsible for social injustice have zero interest in ending social injustice because it's a financial benefit to continuing with social injustice. Could it be that the creators of social injustice really have zero interest in resolving social injustice? Absolutely. America became a nation on July 4th, 1776, and social injustice has been a part of this country since then. So America as a nation has been um, a nation since July 4th, 1776. When this country became a nation, social injustice was just a standard part of this society and what it represented. So social injustice has been here in America since its inception and since even before its inception. When America became a nation on July 4th, 1776, social injustice was in effect and full effect. On August, 7, on, on August 2nd, 1776, the Declaration of Independence was approved. Now this is August 2nd, 1776. And part of this document says, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, <laughs> that they are endowed by their creator with the certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That when every, when, whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute a new government. Laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. So this Declaration of Independence was clearly not written for the victims of social, uh, what do we call it, social unjust, social injustice. This is the Declaration of Independence, written on August 2nd, 1776. We have yet to experience the part that says, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, and that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Black people don't have unalienable rights. Among them are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Not in America. So, when we talk about injustice, injustice has been here even after they wrote the Declaration of Independence declaring all men is equal. 
and endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. And among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Well, if that's true, then injustice has been a part of the life of black people or African people since we arrived in this country. And we have never experienced this business associated with the Declaration of Independence. Again, I'm developing an understanding of the NFL, uh, developing an entertainment and social justice partnership with Jay-Z and Rock Nation. And I'm questioning the social justice partnership part. And I'm asking the question, if we have social injustice, <clears throat> and social injustice is simply because of the behavior of white people in America, then what is a social justice partnership going to do to end social injustice? Is Jay-Z going to come up with a plan that is going to um, encourage white people to change and be fair and balanced and civil with black people? Is Jay-Z going to be able to penetrate the consciousness of those who refuse to be fair and just and reasonable and compatible with black people? A social justice partnership is one hell of a partnership because there's never been social justice in this country as it relates to the relationship between black people and white people. Now, I would think if they're going to declare a social justice partnership, then all they need to do is read the Declaration of Independence because there is something already in place that calls for social justice. The Declaration of Independence. And the Declaration of Independence was approved August 2nd, 1776. And if the Declaration of Independence was approved August 2nd, 1776, and we are in August 21st, 2019, it's clear that this country was never developed with the intention of having social justice for black people. And for the NBA to team with Jay-Z to form a social justice partnership, it is, it is almost complete babble. Because if you notice, when you listen to people talk about it, you hear the word, the term social justice being thrown around a lot. You hear the term, I'm not, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know what happened. I'm on... Okay, I'm on YouTube and I have no sound, so I'm going to end this stream. I'm going to end this stream. But I am going to uh, transfer this to YouTube. So, as I was saying, there was never any intent in this country to have social justice 
for black people in America. And when you hear this term constantly being thrown around, social justice partnership, a uh, form of social justice partnership, uh, uh, work towards social justice, there's never been any intent for there to be social justice in America for black people. And the only way social justice can take place in America for black people is for the consciousness of white people to change. And that's very difficult. Because when you think about it, the consciousness of black people, our consciousness is effed up completely. The consciousness of white people is clearly effed up. So we got two groups of effed up people calling ourselves resolving social justice issues. Now, I'm going to tell you why neither group can ever be successful at resolving social justice issues. Ah. Well, I can't say can never, but certain things have to get rolling in order for that to happen, and these things are not happening right now. First, let's deal with white folks. It is so deeply embedded in the consciousness of white people, their desire for superiority and control over everyone and everything. White people who have a desire for power don't have an understanding of social justice. They don't have an understanding of words like fair or balanced or sharing, um, things like that. They want it all and they want to control everything. So when you have white people who are in positions of power and control, not over the people, but over the institutions people use on their daily living um, basis. When you have people who are in control, who don't know anything about sharing, who don't know anything about being fair, who don't and never have in the history that I've seen and studied, based on my own limited understanding, white people have never had any respect for any other culture they encountered. And this is worldwide. Don't take my word for it. All you have to do is begin studying everywhere they landed outside of Europe. They didn't even have any respect for each other. This is how the origins of America and the origins of Australia being dominated and controlled by white people. Because America was like a penal colony. Australia was like a penal colony for Europeans that didn't want. America was started by the worst of the worst from Europe. Australia was started by the worst of the worst as it relates to European presence or the presence of white people. So the consciousness that white people have demonstrated historically is such that you would think that it is not in their DNA to respect social justice. And I'm just talking from experience and from reading history. There's nothing to be angry about. 
like I said, I don't get involved in calling people the enemy or any of that stuff. I don't uh, identify myself as angry with white people or disappointed with white people or upset with white people or even shocked by the behavior of white people. My point tonight is to say a group now I want I want y'all to hear me on this. This is just like so this is so obvious and these are things that aren't talked about. You have a group of owners and it's a hundred percent white ownership of NFL teams. And a high, I think 87% of the players are black. And these white owners in America, in the year 2016, came together and colluded to make sure one black guy who pissed them off by kneeling on the sidelines couldn't get a, another job in the NFL. I mean, now I want this this is this is a significant because one guy in the NFL who did something a lot of white people in America did not like. So the white representation, which, one, which is 100% of the owners, came together to try to dismiss the presence of this one guy. Now just think about it. That's one man. What do you think they feel about a whole nation of black people? What does that tell you about how nervous they remain when their workforce is 85% black? What does that tell you about social justice and a social justice partnership? There's no chance for a social justice partnership coming from a people who are paranoid and, inf and afraid of black people realizing who we are and the potential power that we have in uniting and acting like we have some sense. For them to collude against one person in this way is a demonstration that social justice partnership is L crap Ola. It's, it's just media jargon. It's nothing that can be real because of the nature of the behavior of white people and we experience it on a daily basis throughout America where black folks are go to work and totally mishandled by white people and then got mortgages and kids in school and college and everything and just deal with social injustice on a regular at the hands of white people simply because of white people's insecurities and their desire to control everybody and everything. No understanding of sharing, uh, respecting other cultures, respecting other groups, ways of life, no interest. So no, I can tell you ahead of time, the NFL is forming an entertainment partnership with Jay-Z and Rock Nation, but a social justice partnership is crap. White people have zero interest in social justice because of their desire to have power over everything and control over everybody. There's no, there's gonna be no social justice partnership. It's just a fancy term. The only way there'll be a social justice partnership is if 
the consciousness of white people changes. If their consciousness changes, then their thoughts will change and then their actions will change. But presently, they are locked into a consciousness of total disrespect for black people in America. And just the presentation that they're forming a social justice partnership with Jay-Z is a full, blatant demonstration of respect when they have zero interest in social justice and have never had interest in social justice in this country. Now, let me read the definition of social justice again. Social justice in terms of the distribution of wealth, opportunities, and privileges within a society. So that's justice in terms of the distribution of wealth, opportunities, and privileges in this society. Well, wealth, opportunities, and privileges in this society are not distributed in a balanced way in this society and never has been distributed, distributed in a balanced and fair way in this society. And the people who are in position to distribute wealth and opportunity and privileges in this society aren't capable of justice in terms of the distribution of wealth, opportunities, and privileges in this society because we can't find any history where they've ever done that. So they're demonstrating that they have no respect for anybody listening when they talk about forming an entertainment and social justice partnership with Jay-Z. And if Jay-Z cracks his mouth to talk about social justice partnership, when the only reason why this is real and this position and this whole thing is going on is because of the social injustice as it relates to Kaepernick being blackballed from the NFL. And they were clearly guilty of collusion. White people coming together to prevent this black man from playing in their league because he made them upset because he took a knee and made a lot of white people in America upset. White people in America, no matter how much you explain why he took a knee, they have no interest in understanding why, they, why he took a knee, and they don't have to give a damn about why he took a knee. <laughs> so the NFL forming a partnership with Jay-Z and Rock Nation for an entertainment and social justice partnership is it's, it's a complete joke. This is an entertainment partnership. This is an entertainment partnership. It's impossible for it to be a social justice partnership because white people have not demonstrated that they are capable of participating in a social justice manner. So their consciousness would need to be recrafted in a whole different way. I personally don't see it happening. Because they don't have to. Now, I dealt with white folks and their mindset and their consciousness pretty much a wrap. They're not going to change. Now, us, black folks in America, I said it a thousand times and I'll say it ten more thousand times, I'll hope a million times, maybe ten million times. I just dealt with the fact that the consciousness of white folks in America and how 
the demonstration of their thought process and their actions since the inception of this country and way before then is such that they have no social justice capabilities. Now let's deal with our consciousness. Our consciousness is is kind of is you no know, is, is extremely jacked up because we're dealing with a consciousness created by white people. And they have 400 unedited, uninterrupted years to create the consciousness we have. And we have yet to address this issue. And as I've said over and over again, if you have any respect for PTSD as it relates for uh, military men and you, you have to and, and that's three or four or two years fighting in the military you, you have to have some respect for the reality associated with 400 years of people having 100% control over our consciousness and anybody that's black that gets it twisted we speak in English and carrying certain names and eating certain foods because most of us have no connection to our true historical cultural spiritual background we just don't know and it's, there's no connection so now because we have yet to address this consciousness issue that we have, I think we have a better chance at improving who we are than we do at waiting for white people to participate in social justice. Like, I don't know of any time in the history of our relationship with Europeans and white folks throughout the globe where they've demonstrated the ability to participate in social justice. So this is all a joke. Jay-Z and the NFL, they're, they're, um, they're just laughing all the way to the bank because it's, it's no different than Democrats just knowing black people don't vote Democrat. Vote or die. Just vote. Your ancestors died so, so you can have an opportunity to vote. You got to vote. Got to vote. Better vote. Vote or die. They know us better than we know ourselves. So, according to me, based on my own limited understanding of things, you got two groups of sick people. You got white folks who've never demonstrated the ability to participate in social justice. And every single place they've ever gone in the history of the planet, understand this. And again, this is only based on my own limited understanding of things, if somebody can present some proof of something different to me, then, you know, I'm, I'm open for learning, and the phone number is there for you to call. Um, in the history of human existence, everywhere white people have gone, they have demonstrated that they are incapable of participating in so-called social justice. The term social justice only exists because white people have never been just with any group of people they've dealt with. So people are trying to make a fool out of us when they talk about partnering for social justice. They're partnering for entertainment. <clears throat> and like I said the other night, um, <clears throat> Roger Goodell and Jay-Z are no different than the, the white man who brought Jackie Robinson into the Major League Baseball. There's always, because white people are constantly, the, the life foundation they move from is profit, power, and control. Profit, power, and control. That's their life foundation. And because that's their life foundation, they're always looking at the money. And they don't want 10 people to not watch the Super Bowl or not watch football. This is how serious they are about this money. Whether the boycott had an impact on the NFL or not, their objective is to use Jay-Z 
to try to be the buffer between connecting as many Negro pockets to the NFL as possible. Historically, that's the only reason why they used us and continue today to use us to in some way benefit their pockets. That is it. Jay-Z, I, I, I really believe he's under the pressure that he's being handled like a respect, respectable businessman. Well, he's not. They know Jay-Z better than he knows himself. Know why? Because Jay-Z don't even know how to act like himself. He doesn't even know how to act like who he spiritually is. Any black man in America who has three kids, two of them two years old, a son and a daughter, and another daughter seven, because of our history in America and what we understand about America, we would be interested in raising our kids, man. This dude is allegedly a billionaire. And to take on work now, you know, uh, Gates and people like him, the guy from Amazon and the rest of them, they're working for free, basically. Because there's so much money, it doesn't matter anymore. It's no longer about the money. That's what they say. And it's true. For them, it's not. Because they got so much, it doesn't matter. So they spend their time working with things that are important to them. Well, my brother <laughs> Jay-Z, you, you functioning with their consciousness and you are duplicating their behavior. You're duplicating their behavior by taking on more responsibilities that take you away from your kids. You're duplicating their behavior because you didn't have your wife sitting by your side at the biggest announcement in your life. And you're duplicating their behavior. And I say duplicate because you are definitely not participating. Because you think you are functioning as a businessman. When in all actuality, you are a pawn in their chess game. People say, oh, Jay-Z playing chess now. and Y'all mad. He ain't playing checkers no more. No, <laughs> no. Ladies and gentlemen, the NFL is playing chess. And Jay-Z is a pawn the NFL is using to play their chess game. So they're using Jay-Z as a pawn in their chess game. Jay-Z hasn't even been playing the game long enough to, to, to call himself playing chess. This guy is allegedly a, a new billionaire trying to sit around cats and generations of billionaires and multi-millionaires and act like he's a part of the game. That's extremely delusional. So our psyche is jacked up because the civil rights movement taught us that as long as we can do what white people can do and have what white people can have, then we're free. And so we've never dealt with this problem that we're functioning with a consciousness created by somebody else. So the idea of social justice, a social justice partnership is a joke. It's, it's, it's really, really... And it's, it's a joke, but it's just not funny. And it's not possible either for social justice to take place for black people in America. It's, it's not possible. Not with the, the, the consistent historical relationship we've had with white people. It's not possible, especially when they just demonstrate it, that they're willing to come together and move against one man because he's black and he moved based on his spirit and not on training. The same with Mahmoud Abdul Rauf when he became a Muslim and he didn't no longer address the flag. Uh, years ago, they got him out of the NFL the following year. 
and he's still smoking NFL players in the big three league today. So, the Declaration of Independence, which was approved on August 2nd, 1776, it, it didn't include us. It wasn't written for us. And the behavior of them toward us in 1776 was such that there was no social justice. <laughs> And there's no history where they've ever had a mindset or consciousness connected to social justice. So because Jay-Z is working with them now, they're going to actually participate in some form of social justice. And, and if we believe that, we're out of our natural minds and something is wrong with us. Now let's get to the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States actually made social injustice a law. <laughs> the Constitution of the United States made social injustice lawful. Let me repeat that one more time. The Constitution of the United States actually made social injustice lawful because the Constitution was originally written for the sole benefit of white men. White men were the only group of people who had access to the entirety of this country identified as North America. White men were the only people that could own land. They were the only people that could claim deeds. They were the only people that could benefit from the natural resources and all of these things. And this was all by law. The Constitution that was the first significant, the most significant affirmative action document in the history of this country because it was written for the sole beneficiary, um, the sole benefit of white men. And they could go get rich on oil and get drunk and blow their money and then go get rich on gold and get drunk and blow all their money, then go get rich on steel and get drunk and blow all their money. They had full un, 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 unchallenged access to the whole country and they were the only ones who could by law according to the Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution was ratified on September 25th, 1789. And of course, amendments to the Constitution e eventually came. But what I'm saying, the Constitution of the United States of America actually made social injustice law. So how can you, how can we fix ourselves to believe that for some reason <laughs> the NFL is going to form a social justice partnership with Jay-Z? social justice being justice in terms of the distribution of wealth opportunities and privileges within the society. They still have golf courses in this country that don't allow black people and women. There are still private clubs in this country black people can't. But there's still white cities and white communities black people can't. Come on man, this, these people have no interest and social justice. So, I'm calling it all a sham. This is no hatred towards Jay-Z because I understand he may not know any better. 
just because you got a lot of money don't make you smart. And a lot of people feel like, well, he was a businessman and he, he put himself in the position to make all this money and so he must be intelligent. Well, we all have our strong areas of intelligence. And some of us have areas where we're not so strong with intelligence. So just because you have money doesn't make you smart across the board. Like, you got everything all figured out. And just think about it. Jay-Z is dealing with white men who've been operating the way they have for the last 50, 60 years. And he's just now getting on board. I mean, come on, man. Let's just keep it a buck. Jay-Z has no idea what he's getting himself into. No idea whatsoever. More power to him, though. But I hope he doesn't lose his mind out here and talk about a social justice partnership. I, that language they keep using out here, social justice, social justice. This country has never been interested in social justice, ever. There's no history that I could find or know of that where white people have ever been interested or involved in social justice. So social justice is a sham. At minimum, between this partnership, we should understand that social justice is a crack of crapola, a crock of crapola. Matter of fact, it's both of those. We should understand that that's language used to appease the public. It's nothing real about it. So social injustice has been a part of this country from its inception. And it has been a part of this country from its inception because of the mindset and consciousness of white people. And the mindset and consciousness of white people is just not going to change without that part being addressed. No different than the mindset and consciousness of us. And, and as long as we don't address the fact that we're out of our natural minds and functioning with a consciousness created by white people during that 400 plus years of unedited, uninterrupted mind control, if we don't address that, we're going to continue having challenges independent of white people. So we got two sets of crazy people the white folks and the black folks call ourselves trying to resolve something that we aren't capable of resolving. White people can't fix social injustice. They're not, they're not capable. And black people sitting at the table trying to resolve anything without resolving our own consciousness first, we're demonstrating that we're out of our natural minds. Um, at this point in time, if anybody has anything they want to say, they can call in 860-281-1615. Again, the number is 860-281-1615. And um, I'll take some calls or I'll check out. But I'm, I think I've finished saying what I wanted to say. And if you um, missed the beginning, then you'll get a chance to uh, play it after I sign off. A six zero two eight one one six one five, and basically tonight I was making the point that it's absolutely impossible for white people to work for social justice. It's impossible. It's impossible for white people to work for social justice. It's impossible. And for any of us, any of us that buys into that line about social justice, any of us who buys into that line about social justice, after what we witnessed with the owners colluding against one black man who did something they didn't like, then we just as out of our natural, even more out of our natural minds than we already are. As I always say, I appreciate you for tuning in. You could have been doing any number of other things, but you chose to hang out with me, F. But for a few minutes or for the duration, I appreciate it. I do not take it for granted. 
I am Alphonse McGriff III, born and raised in Hartford, Connecticut. I identify myself as a public intellectual, an author, an inventor, and speaker. My specialty is harmonious and productive communication. You can find that information on my Facebook business page, Alfonso Speaks. And um, I share information not with the goal to change anybody or anything, but just to share a perspective that is represented by me. And I don't claim to have it all figure out, figured out. I don't claim to know it all. And I never come on here hating on people, but just sharing a perspective about what I see going on. I appreciate you. If you could share the video, that's cool. Um, if you could like the video, that's cool too. But I do appreciate you for tuning in. Um, my YouTube channels are Make It Plain, and you would have to type in my name, Alfonso, to find it. And my YouTube, my other YouTube channel is Alfonso Speaks. So, again, I appreciate you for tuning in. And as I always say, I love you and I always will. And I will never, ever give up on my people. Ever. Peace, y'all. I'm out.